Okay, welcome back. So, in the next part of this series, we're going to carry on with building our base on Mars. Um, so, last time we got the furnace up and running um, with proper gas feeder. Um, we got some cooling set up um, and connected it all up to our gas processor from last time. Um, what we're now going to do is we have managed to make ourselves the alloys that we need in order to be able to start to do some more advanced automation. So we're going to start on that. So to do that, the first thing we're going to need is a computer um, because we're going to need to be able to program our IC chips. And that's going to need a motherboard in it, an IC editor motherboard. Then what we're going to need is going to be an IC housing which will connect to the computer and that's where we're going to do our programming and we're only going to use that for programming because I think otherwise you run into all sorts of problems by trying to program in situ. Um, you only need to have one thing set wrongly and before you know it you've reprogrammed your gas mixer as your power controller or something else and it all goes very wrong. Um, so we're going to get that set up over here. The other thing that we need to seriously think about once we've got the components made for this is going to be more battery storage. Um, we did add an extra solar last time, um, although I forgot to turn it the right way to face the sun until quite late in the day. Um, but I am concerned that we're not making anything like enough power at the moment. Um, So that's the first one. We're going to let it build a second IC housing because actually we're going to connect that um, to where we're going to use it. Um, and we're going to obviously actually need to make a chip as well. So that will be the next thing we'll make. Right, so let's get started. Let's get the computer up and running. Uh, try and find a quiet corner for it. I think over here will be okay for now. Um, so we put the computer down, uh, we're going to insert the motherboard now, we may as well. Right, we need a screwdriver and there it is. Right, um, what we're now going to do is just connect in some cable. And we'll also need to connect in cable to actually put um, an IC housing in there as well that will allow us to do some programming. So that's all we need. Um, so the hard bit really was making the alloys required, um, the electrum, the solder and the steel to make these. Um, so let's get one chip building for now. Um, I do find once I reach this stage um, that I tend to automate absolutely everything. Um, we'll try and take it at a sensible speed. But the first thing I think we'll automate might be the furnace. Um, so I'm going to put the other housing over here somewhere. Um, let me think about a good place for it where it's not too much in the way. Um, perhaps I'll put it on the wall here. Um, that will do. It's obviously always really great if you can find somewhere to connect to without having to use too much extra wire. Um, but you'd just be a bit thoughtful about not connecting things in silly places for later on. Okay, so I'm now going to get the labeler. This is where it gets important. I'm going to label this housing, IC housing, furnace, control. And I'm going to rename this one as programming only. Um, and that is pretty important because otherwise things tend to get a bit chaotic. I'm actually going to start labelling up the, um, there's the first chip, let's get that. I'm going to start labelling up the uh, various components around the furnace as well. Um, but I'm going to need a couple of other bits because we're going to need a way to tell it what we're going to make. So to do that we're going to use um, a dial um, which will need a logic switch 
and also we're going to have a light that can change colour to tell us what state it's in. Turn that one off. Okay. Um, I'll figure out where to put those in a moment. We're also going to need the labeler out. Okay, so let's just label this carefully now. So this is pressure regulator, furnace, oops, fuel. In. Let's be really clear so we don't screw this up later on. Volume pump furnace out. Okay, now we're going to want to put, uh, I somehow managed to print a logic reader instead of a light, we'll put that down, I'll be finding use for that in a minute. Um, right, so we're going to need to put the dial somewhere near to this. Um, could put it on here, it may not be the best place for it, but um, it's probably okay. Um, I'd rather do it somewhere that we could see it when we're facing. I suppose then the question is do we put it on the ground here? Uh, decisions, decisions, let's put it here. Um, so let's connect that up. furnace setting. Now the other thing we're going to need to do is actually be able to connect the sensor port on the furnace which is here into the data network because we're going to need to know what the temperature and pressure in the furnace actually is at any given time. Um, so I'm going to, I think the neatest way is to bring this cable out the back here. Um, and connect it into there. Okay, that should do the job. Um, okay, good. Right, and I still need that light. Yeah, you'll see even now it's uh, just past solar noon. We're still only at two, uh, two charge on there. So we are pretty much burning up now um, power as fast as we're generating it. We'll turn some of these off for now because that will save a little bit. Let's get a bit of power into here. Uh, and also that's burnt that whole stack of coal, so um, do need to just be a little bit thoughtful. Right, anyway, back to what we were trying to do. Um, lights. Resist the urge to say camera action. Um, right, there we go. That will do. And there we go. Um, now, I wonder where we can put this light. And I'm actually going to do it as an LED. Um, I don't really want to put it on the floor, but I might have to. Um, it's not really a good, I can't get it to snap to this unless I weld it, which I could do, but that really requires shoots. I mean, I could weld it and unweld it, but that feels desperately cheaty. Um, I could put it here, but it's actually more helpful to be able to look at the furnace and see what it's doing. So I think I'm going to put it on the ground for now. Um, don't really like it as a solution, but we may tidy up a bit later on. I know I keep saying that and I never actually do, um, which is always the problem. Once you get something that works, you think, can I be bothered to dismantle this and move it a little bit over? But okay, nonetheless, that's um, I think the basics of what we need. Um, Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to come over to the computer. We are going to turn it on and we're going to make sure that's pointing at programming only. And then we're going to go edit. Now I've got a library of scripts I've already written. Um, so I'm simply going to go and find the one that I've previously used. And I will include the code for this in the comments. 
Um, you'll see quite a lot. Some of the ones I've uh, downloaded off the workshop, others are ones that I have written from scratch. Um, Oh, and there are also ones that I have uh, modified, but you can see there really are quite a lot. Um, and I'm looking for the furnace control. Um, these are persistent between games, which is really useful. But on the other hand, the uh, controls to filter and sort the list is actually um, not great. So. It's a bit fiddly. Auto furnace, that's the one I was looking for. Uh, no, that's not the one I'm looking for. That fires up two arc furnaces. This is where it's helpful that I actually at least put some comments in there. Um, now I can't find it. Um, You'll see I have various points written scripts to do lots of things and I will be using those during this series of videos to show you some of the things you can do. Um, and and not a lot of them are around safety features um, to stop you from doing things like killing the plants um, and those sorts of things. Um, and I still can't actually find the one I'm looking for, which is ridiculous. Perhaps that was the one I wanted and I may have given it the wrong Ah, there we are, Auto Alloy, that's what it's called. So let's load that. There we go. Right, so this is actually quite an old script, um, but it still works. Um, for some reason, sometimes when you load it, it uh, doesn't correctly read the labels, but um, it will work. Um, so what this is going to do is this is going to allow us to connect the dial setting um, up to then set temperatures and pressures in the furnace um, and then it's going to take it through a smelting cycle. So we're going to have the dial set up so that basically zero means turn off, um, one is going to be steel, two is going to be solder, three is going to be electrum, four is invar, five is constant tan. Um, oh, in fact I could have showed you that much more easily with this code here. Um, so the first thing it's going to do is read the setting on the dial and see whether or not it's actually set to one of these. If it is, it's going to then jump to the right label here, which is going to set the target settings. Um, and the target hash is actually what it's trying to make as well. Um, and then it's going to run through a loop where basically it's going to um, make sure the output pump is turned off. It's going to um, go through and read what the current um, temperatures and pressures are. Um, and then it's going to pressurize the um, furnace to the target pressure. Once it reaches the target pressure, um, it's then going to ignite it. Um, once it's heated up, it is going to keep checking um, to see whether or not the recipe that's in there is going to make the target um, item because obviously um, it relies on the player feeding it with the right resources. Once it detects it is, it's going to automatically pull the handle to eject it. And it's going to keep going around that loop until it detects it's no longer in the range where it can make that, at which point it's then going to go into an empty cycle where it will um, turn off the input valve, it will turn on the output, it will suck out all the hot gas, and then uh, it will recycle and, and reset. So that's what broadly this script is going to do. Um, so I'm going to now export it to the programming only IC, which has this in it. Um, and you'll see it doesn't actually need to be turned on to export it because it's not running any code. So I picked it up, you can see it's now got 4584 bytes on it. So it's got a program on it rather than being empty. Turn the computer off, they're a little bit power hungry. Um, and then we're gonna put that in there. Now I'm gonna quickly turn it on and that will flash an error. Um, and it's an unknown command error, but basically it's because none of these things are set to anything. Um, so in the code, I've aliased these to remind me what I need to set these things to. Um, and if I've remembered what hardware I need to set up correctly, this should be a simple task. Although nine times out of 10, I find that actually I missed something. So let's cycle through and set this to dial furnace setting. 
input pump. So that should be the pressure regulator. Oops. Uh, I just jumped past it. Pressure regulator, furnace fuel in. Um, okay, the output pipe um, is actually measuring the temperature and pressure of the output. We can actually make that set to the furnace. Um, I used oh, to, um, on this, have a separate um, analyzer on the pipe, but actually um, we can save ourselves a bit of hardware there. Whoops. Um, the LED is, so if I can do this before this turns off, and the output pump is the volume pump, so that's that one there. Right, now before I turn that on, I am actually going to change the battery on my suit because otherwise the lights are all going to go out at the vital moment. There we go. Okay, good. So, well, there's a couple more things we need to do. We need to change the maximum setting on this now to be, whoops, not to be 21, um, but to be 5, um, which will be constant tan. Um, usually at some point I forget what this is all set to, so I end up making myself a little sign. Um, but let's um, pick that one up. Let's start by um, seeing if we can make some more steel. Um, I suspect to do that we're going to need um, to go and grab some more. Did I leave any coal in here? No, uh, some more coal, um, which is probably a smart move anyway when I look at the state of the battery um, and realize that we have no coal left. So um, let's go grab some raw materials. Um, and Try not to get lost, um, and then we can try out our new auto furnace. Um, the advantage of obviously using these scripts is the fact they are reusable between uh, between games, so you can uh, experiment, get one that works really, really well, um, and then actually I'm going to grab that ice because we're going to need more nitrogen soon, um, and then you can obviously reuse it in uh, future playthroughs. Um, there's a bit of iron, we'll need some more iron. I know we've got ingots that we could feed in, but we may as well feed it in as... Or, if I can find three stacks, because you'll remember we need three to one ratio of iron to coal. Right, there we go. That's more than enough. Now we just got to find some coal uh, and also find our way home. That's the base over there, I just saw it. Um, There's more iron. Resist the temptation to just mine all of that while I'm here. Um, because whilst we're going to need a load more of it, there we go. We need some coal first. Whoops. Okay. We'll grab a few of these because I think we're going to need them for a combination of steel and power. Um, okay, let's see whether we can. I think that's enough in there, yes. Oh, don't know why that's there and not in there. Oh, okay, well, whatever. Uh, right. Okay. Right. Grab that because I did notice we're getting a little low on copper. And if we go back down the hill, now we will grab some of that iron if I can find it in the dark. There it is. Because um, we might just have enough to make two stacks of steel, which would be lovely. That ain't going anywhere. No, that is really all of it. Um, unless there is a spare slot in there. Oh, because of the labeler, that's why that confused me. Oh, should I use that stupid pipe up as well? Never mind. Right, okay, that's fine. We'll probably find that again in the morning unless there's a storm between now and then. Um, okay. Actually, I think first things first, let's get some power in the battery because otherwise things are going to go bad real quick. Right, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to dial this in to a value of 1. Let's turn that, actually turn it on. Right, so what this is now doing is filling 
No, it's not. Why is it not filling? Oh, because I actually haven't turned on the IC. Let's vacuum that anyway, because we'll need to. Um, helps if you turn the IC on, doesn't it? Right, now you'll see it's actually attempting to reject whatever's in there. And that's because it's detected that it's got warm gas. But I'm, gonna, I'm just going to reset the whole process by... Okay, we'll try that one again. No. Anyway, you get, you get the idea of how this bit works, at least, whilst it's busy just trying to reset itself. I think it's going to keep doing this now until it gets down to zero pressure. Um, that's kind of okay. Um, let's set that to one. Um, what it should do is, once it's finished vacuuming this out, it should actually turn that pump off. Um, unless I've wired it up wrong, in which case it might turn off any other random device anywhere on the base. Um, I guess we'll find out. Um, oh, it's driving me mad. I'll come over here for a minute while it's busy doing that. Um, let's at least get that copper smelting. Um, right, come on, get to zero now. Right, there we go. Right, so now you'll see it's changed the colour. It's now on a standby state. It's filling. And it's set this dial here. And get the angle right to 165 kPa. Because that pressure, when filled and ignited, which is now done, it's done the ignition for us. You'll see it's now green. Green means ready to receive. So we can now put the iron in and that should melt. As you melt ingots, they do outgas a bit, so sometimes it can mess the gas mix up, and actually sometimes it needs a second cycle before it's ready to go, but let's um, hope we don't have that this time. Um, and since that's gone in, drop in the coal, and in theory it should be at the right temperature and pressure range to make steel immediately, which is done, and you'll see it's gone. There we go, and it's ejected it. So actually what I could now do is I could probably make a second one, which is obviously what I was hoping for. Um, so you can see it's dead easy. And if it drops out of the range here whilst I'm loading it, um, it will just detect that and it will empty the furnace. Um, there we go. But in the meantime, as soon as that reaches a mix that makes the target, which is steel, it'll pull the handle. There we go. See how quick and easy that was. Um, so the thing you need to remember is to set that back to zero, because otherwise, as soon as it gets out that temperature, it will decompress the furnace, and then it will refill it and relight it, ready to make some more, um, which I kind of don't want to do. And that's, that's probably enough to prove the point, ready for now. We didn't really need that much steel just yet. Um, however, whilst we've got a hot furnace, um, guess we may as well. Um, yeah, it's actually not enough now to... Uh, it's probably too hot actually to make iron. Yeah, okay, well never mind. That's okay, we've got alternative arrangements. There we go, right, we'll throw them in there. Okay, so that can just sit there and run now. I've set that back to zero, so this will go back into standby once it cools down. Um, obviously it's more efficient if you can use it while it's hot um, for as much as possible. Um, I'm going to turn that off, but I'm gonna put this stack in here. Um, and I'm then gonna take this water ice um, and I'm going to, am I going to melt it in there? Um, yes, I may as well melt it in there. I was just a bit thoughtful because obviously it's going to bring the water temperature down in the pipe. Um, and actually whether or not I want to do that, but um, that will be okay, I think. Um, let's just cancel this pressurising for a minute. How are we doing for temperature in here? 16 degrees. It's still kind of cold. Um, I'm going to throw that in. This, this is not going to help, of course, but... Right, while we're in here, let's, uh, let's have a little eat and a little drink. It's 
slurp slurp and back in there and you can hear that didn't fill up and that's because it's brought the water temperature down below freezing by adding that extra ice that's okay I'm not too worried I've got a 100% bottle here this one's at 100% and this one is uh, in fact it's gone over now as, literally as I said it's gone over and melted and now it's filled up so my bigger concern is what it's doing to the temperature in here so I think in now we need to start actually seriously thinking about some temperature control in this greenhouse um, and once we've got that working and we can leave it we can set up um, some slightly better hydroponics um, and then maybe concentrate on a bit more of a, a kind of um, human focused hub rather than a, a greenhouse um, but I think the first thing we need to do is know that it's not going to kill the plants as soon as we walk away so uh, let's close and lock the helmet because I don't want to mess that one up. Let's vent some CO2 because always good to do that and get a bit of extra CO2 into the greenhouse. Um, and if we look at the atmosphere, oh, oh, if we look at the atmosphere, we'll find that the tablet's run out of power because I put it in my pocket left turned on. Um, so let's nick the battery out of here. Okay, I've got far too many windows open. Let's just do that for a minute. Okay, um, so you can see we've got about 3% CO2, still too much oxygen, too little nitrogen in here, um, but hopefully we'll gradually balance that out. Um, and in fact, I think maybe the next thing we'll do, now we've got plenty of steel, is we'll build the rest of the gas processor because we've now got enough steel for the rest of those tanks. Um, so I think that would be a smart move. And then we can um, use whatever's left which is quite a bit of propellant in my jetpack which is all nitrogen initially um, we can feed that into the system we can use that as part of our main atmosphere um, and I can refill the jetpack with CO2 which we'll have absolutely loads of so uh, that battery's nicely charged now um, I do think we need a second one though so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm on the wrong machine well while I'm here let's um, Let's just build the battery, shall we? Um, and I really can't, of course, we need all sorts of things we haven't got. Right, okay, so uh, it's one thing at a time, tank. I think we'll need to bring more steel across. Yes, we used it all up, but luckily, here's an absolute load we prepared earlier. So let's make, we'll probably make a couple of tanks to be honest, but. Uh, I don't want to leave it building too many. Let's um, let's go and get some copper and some gold out of here. Um, it'd be good to get that other battery going. Right, now what we will need of course for this is more heavy cable. Um, so what I want to do is put the other one on here. But you'll see I can't do that. Um, there is a workaround and I'll show you how that works in a minute. It's a bit annoying. Um, I don't really, it feels a bit cheaty and I don't really like doing it like this but what we can do is build an iron frame. remembered I've got this um, switch that out otherwise when I need it we won't have it right okay there we go um, that's probably enough right so what we can do is we can build an iron frame here now we can build the other battery here making sure we get it the right way round um, then we can connect up the battery down there I'll just hop over the top here
that's connected to there so now let's turn that on and the only thing I've got left to do is connect it to the charging at this end which I didn't do and I've got one too few how typical is that right in the meantime we'll get the angle grinder and frame is gone wasn't right at all. <laughs> ah, okay, right, okay, let's start this one again from the beginning. Right, so we want that to go there, I want that to go there, and then I want that to go up there up there and in there there we go right okay so that's now connected you'll see I've also connected the um, sensor ports um, because later on we're going to want to be able to measure the total battery charge um, but for now that will do the job I probably will actually stack two more on top in the end um, four batteries really should give us enough power to last for quite a long time um, but for now, that gives us a bit more capacity. Right, let's get back to the task that we were going to do, which was to get a tank up for the carbon dioxide. We've actually got nearly everything we need here anyway. Whoops, I don't know why that chose that way to rotate. It seems completely mad, but there we go. Um, why is that not connecting there? Oh, because I've run the cable in the wrong place. Hmm. Okay, well actually I think this might be a case where it's simpler to just slightly break the symmetry and, uh, oops, removed the wrong bit didn't I? That's always the danger when you're working with the wrench, it's the worst tool for that. Um, let's just reconnect that. This is now, of course, we don't actually have enough. Okay, so. Right, I'm going to do this the lazy way, not least because rerouting that is going to just cause all sorts of other problems. Right, now the question is, oh, I do have a piece of pipe left and it's in my inventory, so I'm not quite sure why I'd forgotten about that um, since it was in the way earlier on. Um, I don't want to respray it though, so let's just do that and then add that to it and then... There we go. Right, so this is going to be the CO2 tank, so we need some grey paint, which we don't have. Um, let's get that done. You can see the uh, gas rising from uh, the radiators over there as it heats the surrounding atmosphere. Whoops. Obviously it's going to cool a lot faster at night. You'll see that the furnace is all quiet now, it's depressurised. Um, actually we can turn that off. Um, and it's just sat there quietly waiting, so um, ready for us to use when we want to. Meanwhile, I imagine that this is probably very hot. Um, you can see 
it goes up from minus 64 to minus 31 just standing on it so uh, whatever gas is in there that's uh, that is pretty warm um, that's 180 degrees so yeah we definitely don't want to add that anywhere near our breathable atmosphere right let's get that sprayed up Okay, so I think what we'll probably do will be we may as well use that to refill the propellant tank. Um, so we're going to make a couple of things. We're going to make um, canister storage for filling and a pressure regulator. But I'm actually going to make two canister storage, and I'm also going to make a volume pump because um, we want to be able to empty the dirty gas now as well um, to feed that in. Um, the other problem that we will run into quite quickly with CO2 on Mars is we'll end up with just too much of it um, and potentially it's going to blow the tank up so uh, we're going to put a safety valve on there as well. So what we'll do with that is we'll fit a back pressure regulator to the tank and we will attach a passive vent to it so that if the pressure exceeds a certain amount it just opens the pressure reg and vents the excess pressure straight into the atmosphere. Um, so to do that we're going to need for both of those together we're going to need two pressure regulators so let's just build two of them now and we'll need a volume pump I think we're going to need more gold in there in a minute so let's just go do that. We need to go mining again in a minute Um, and we need a volume pump and of course Power we're going to need a passive vent and a bunch of pipes I don't want too much hardware to stack up here where it risks getting blown away. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, as we've done with the others, we're going to uh, build pipe across um, now let's see whether we can figure out where we can fit a pressure regulator I think we're probably gonna have to put it on that side um, in fact we're gonna need two one for the gas filler and one back pressure regulator just a vent so I'm gonna put the back pressure regulator I'm gonna need a bit more space because I'm gonna need space to get cables through here we'll put the back pressure regulator there and we'll put the forward pressure regulator here. That should work and that will allow us to put the tank onto there. Um, I know we're going to need to do that. Um, right, so we're going to need a few more pipes. Let's get that on there. Okay, meanwhile, let's think about where we're going to put the uh, waste disposal. Um, actually it's probably not a bad place for over here, there's not much else going on. Um, so perhaps we just rig this up this way. That will do the job. And we'll grab the pipe out of here. Oh, 
Oh, that was foolish. Right, we'll deal with that in a minute. Okay. Okay, now we're definitely going to need more cable, but at least should be possible to cable this up. Uh, let's put the passive vent on there, if it will go. No, it won't. It wants to go somewhere on here, so we'll do it like that. There we go. Right. So I'm going to set this one super high. Um, this is where having the labeler is actually just a smarter solution. Um, you've got to point it in the right place though, so make sure you point it at the dial, not at the uh, overall back pressure regulator. I'm going to set that to 30,000, um, which is more than enough. Um, in fact, I'm just thinking, do we even want to go that high? Um, in fact it won't set higher than 20265 for whatever reason so that's fine um, I'll save myself some time on here I do want that to pressurise to 8000 um, turn that off, put that away put that away um, ok so in theory with some cable we should be good to go um, so we'll get all this lot connected up um, got a bit of respraying to do. Um, we have some grey. Oh, we have got some khaki as well. That's always good. Um, so let's uh, do that. Oh, I thought I could do it while I was flying. I really should learn. Okay, so that's our safety system. It's not connected, but the safety system and our jetpack pressurizing system. Um, we are going to want to be able to mix some of this CO2 in with greenhouse air as well, though. So I'm going to leave that can over there. Um, and we've also got the ability to empty a tank into the overall waste gas system here which is obviously going to be very useful. Um, we can feed it with our suit waste tank um, to have the gas uh, fed in and processed, but actually um, more urgently and more importantly, um, we're going to feed in the nitrogen cylinder from our current jet pack. Whoops. Um, we're gonna suck all the nitrogen into the atmosphere processing system and then when we've done that, we're going to refill the jetpack with carbon dioxide because we've got loads of carbon dioxide, but nitrogen is actually quite hard to come by. So let's turn that on. What we haven't done yet is actually put any carbon dioxide filters in, so we should probably make a couple of those. Um, you'll see this top battery starting to charge now, which is good. Um, I don't quite understand how it decides which battery to charge in which order, but um, the fact it's doing something makes me happy. Uh, more iron. Carbon dioxide filters. Actually, while we're here, do we need any more for the suit? Not yet. We can start to make heavier duty filters now as well, which do have a longer lifespan, but I'm not going to right away. They're fairly resource intensive. Okay, so let's get that up and running. Then we can filter some carbon dioxide. So hopefully we should see that starting to come into here. Yeah, there we go. That's coming in. And it's this here should be. So at the moment that pressure's dropping because it's pumping it all into here. Um, and that's fine, and then this is venting to the atmosphere, so um, that should all be fine. Um, there's actually 
a lot of other stuff starting to build up in here so let's get these on for a minute and I think it might be time to automate some atmosphere processing in a minute um, right I didn't leave anything on did I no always good to check okay so what we're going to do here I'm going to dial this right up to 100 maximum capacity I'm going to grab um, this out of here critical. and of course now if I turn on the jetpack nothing happens I'm going to throw it in there and turn that on that's going to pump all of that out of there and into the atmosphere processor so that is now nearly completely empty and it's empty okay so that's that one and while we're here let's, uh, let's do the same waste tank with the waste tank I'm not so fussed about that being completely empty, although it is. Right, good, okay, and then what we'll do is we'll take the propellant tank and we'll throw it in there. And, okay, we haven't really got enough pressure in here yet, but enough to keep me going for a minute. Um, that can go in there. And there we go, the jetpack's working just fine again. So now we're burning, oh, I say burning, we're um, using carbon dioxide for lift. Um, rather than nitrogen um, and the nitrogen we had is now being fed through the system into here and that probably is well on its way to being yes well on its way to being consumed and fed into a breathable atmosphere oh, it's very cold so absolutely now it is time to start thinking about how we do some temperature control so the first priority actually is going to probably be a heater in there um, but we're going to make a heater and a cooler so that's the heater and then we're going to make a cooler we're also going to make um, a sensor sensors you can make in either the um, hydraulic pipe bender or in the um, electro printer um, however, what we're also going to need is a dial because I'm going to set a proper thermostat like you'd have at home. Um, it's probably unnecessary, you could just hard code it to uh, a standard temperature, but uh, I kind of like the idea of having a thermostat that we can set. So that's that. And that. and we're also going to go with some more IC so we're going to have a housing and a chip so we'll let that build now in order to make the cooler work we're actually going to need to have some sort of pressurized gas system on the outside with radiators so um, we will actually need a, um, a canister um, and several lengths of pipe. Now you can use a number of different materials to do this. Um, you can choose to even use liquid and have water cooled. Um, but I am going to use some of that carbon dioxide because we've got quite a lot of it and um, really it's not a lot else that we're going to... Oops, what did I do that for? That was just clumsy. Um, Okay, let's put that back in. Um, build the IC. Right. Okay, so that's going to be needed inside. Okay, um, right, and we're going to need radiators. Luckily, we've now got enough to make tons. Right, I'm not quite sure where I'm going to fit this yet. Um, probably I'm going to build it up on the roof here. Maybe on that side, maybe on that side. Probably this side's going to give me a bit more space. Um, just uh, come on, rotate. Actually, let's just, I'll just stick it down here for now. We'll figure it out in a minute, but it just gets it out of the way. It's one less thing to be wandering around holding. Um, quite a lot of parts here right okay so the chip we're going to put the chip in here 
and unsurprisingly um, I'm going to go to edit and I am going to go and find my greenhouse script um, which is in here somewhere I think they're probably ordered based on when I last used them yes I think they probably are Okay, let's overwrite those. Okay, so this is a super simple script, but it's just easier to do in IC. You can build it with logic chips. What this is going to do is it's going to connect to the heat of the cooler, and we're going to have a gas sensor, a thermostat dial, um, and then it's going to basically read the temperature, and if the temperature drops too far outside of the range, it's going to either heat it up or cool it down. So it's going to give us a five degree margin on that. So that's what the script does. I'm going to do that. I'm going to export that. 828 bytes, so that exported OK. I'll throw that in there. I think I've got all the bits I need internally. Um, so let's turn that off. Um, and then what we're going to do is we are going to get this rigged up. Should be lazy and cancel the pressurize. Right, okay. Now, uh, this is where we need to figure out where we're going to put these things because what we need is space to put particularly the cooler where it can be connected to an outside pipe network. And I kind of prefer to set it up something like this. What I should have done was print a whole load more cable. I haven't got anywhere near enough. Never mind guess we're coming back in in a minute and that onto there okay that at least connects them um, now we'll need to connect the thermostat and the gas sensor so actually let's um, just think about this let's save some wire if I set these like this they can go in there Still not going to have enough. I'm actually going to have nearly enough, which is almost more frustrating. Um, right, so gas sensor that goes in here. Float it round, not motion. We want that to gas. And over here, we want a dial. Uh, now we're going to need to make sure we name these carefully. So let's call that dial greenhouse thermo, and we'll call that gas sensor greenhouse call that greenhouse heater greenhouse okay now what I've got to try and figure out now is how I'm going to fit oops first of all it's how I'm going to pick up the housing how I'm going to fit the housing into the available space let's see if we can do something here as I very tidily throw things around. Um, right, that won't go there because of where the fridge is. That's a shame, actually. That would have been quite good. Um, just trying to see whether there's anywhere that I can put this. I don't really care too much because it's going to end up under the floor. Um, I'm just trying to work out if there's anywhere that I can put this where actually I can connect it without using too much cable. I think I'm going to come up with one too few on the cable wherever I put it, looking at this. Um, yeah, there's really no way to do it. Um, we'll put it here for now. Um, I'll put that in there. All right, so um, let's at least try to get it part connected. Um, Yeah, there's kind of no good way to do this. I've got one too few, which I'm going to do it. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to temporarily steal that Power from there. Um, really want to do this before my suit battery runs out. Um, okay, so gas sensor, we want to set that to... Whoops gas sensor greenhouse. The heater is going to be wall heater greenhouse. The cooler is going to be wall cooler greenhouse. 
the thermostat is going to be the this is where it's important to have things set right it would be terrible to have it set to the temperature of the there we go setting for the furnace and that's all that needs connecting so we turn that on we'll see this is flashing an error because it's got no gas intake and we've got a few other problems so first of all at the moment whoops um, there we go that's not set right uh, so let's set our thermostat this is in uh, degree C so let's set it to uh, 21 that feels like a nice temperature and turn that on and actually it's colder than that so it's flicked the heater on um, and you can see the external is 10 degrees so the heater's on uh, and actually that should be fine I can leave that and it'll turn the heater off when it gets up to the right temperature but I need to go outside change the batteries in my suit but also connect up the gas line for the wall cooler so wall cooler relies on having some cold gas um, to use as a refrigerant um, so what we're going to do with that um, is going to be that we are going to take some carbon dioxide um, I'm going to need an extra cylinder for that but I didn't want to print it before I went inside because they're a bit bulky um, and we're going to fill it from the filler we just put in place for the jetpack um, and then we are going to connect it those are radiators up to the wall cooler oh that came out as well could have been a bad accident that's not still open no it's not right okay so I'll put that in there and allow that to pressurize I'd really like it a little bit higher pressure than that but um, apparently it's not happening no I'm surprised. I thought we'd have uh, quite an excess of carbon dioxide by now. I guess a lot of the carbon dioxide in the system is still in the hot tank. Um, I don't really want to do that mixture yet. Right, let's turn some of these off to save some power because uh, it's night time. We still haven't built the power controller for that yet. And also let's turn that off because that uses lots of power. Okay, well, that's a start. Um, I'll turn that off for now. Um, I won't turn that off because you know I'll forget to turn it back on. Okay, so we've got some uh, carbon dioxide in here anyway. That's a good start. Um, let's get back up on the roof. Just conscious we haven't got a huge amount in our jetpack either, but that's okay. Right, so what we're going to do is we are going to connect the wall cooler with a curved pipe. I'm going to connect it up here. Now, I need to be able to pressurise the system, which is why I've fitted this tank connector. But then we also need a whole load of radiators. Um, so I'm going to actually connect it like this. Um, whoops. Just looking at how many bits of pipe I've got to work out the most efficient use of radiators. Uh, we've got six radiators. I'll put one there, one there. I'm going to put one on there. That's probably enough. It's not like the superheated um, gas that's coming out of the furnace. We just need some way that it can dump the heat. Um, and then what we need to do is pressurise that. So we'll just throw that in. Um, there's no pump on here, you'll notice. So we'll just equalise the pressure. Um, that's only 80 kPa in there, so we're definitely going to need more. Um, that's not going to be enough for that wall cooler to actually function. But um, the, the principle is is there. That's how we're going to connect it. I just need to top that up as we get more CO2 available. Um, so let's have a look at the state of this and see whether we can actually start to use any of this hot gas yet. 79 degrees. It still really is rather too hot. Um, I'm going to maybe risk venting just for one tick and try and get some across. I may live to regret this may not live and may still regret this um, wow look at that heat that's not good is it um, that's very not good okay well I think we'd better run those processes and at least separate out the uh, flammables as quick as we can otherwise something's probably going to explode um, if it hasn't already. Um, we have got some spare radiators though so actually now might be a good time to fit them on there and just 
help it to reduce the ambient temperature a bit. What we need to be very careful of now is that the gas that's feeding into the hab is not superheated. Uh, at the moment that's looking okay, but look how fast that temperature is rising. Uh, it's because that's extremely hot. Okay, so I think we need to turn that off for a minute. Um, 21 degrees, I'm very happy with this temperature. Um, 375, not so much. Of course, these will cool down in these tanks um, with their larger surface area and also at lower pressure. That will also help. So let's um, suck that through there as well. So again, this is very hot. Um, we should now at least be able to pressurize this. Um, there we go. So obviously a wall cooler with uh, gas at 170, 180 degrees, or whatever it's going to end up at, which I suspect is going to be to 300 degrees, well it's already over two, so 300 at least. It's obviously not going to really be very effective at cooling anything down, um, but, but what I'm hoping is that if we then connect the gas up with all those radiators, compared to the volume of that layout, four radiators should cool it down pretty quickly. Um, so let's see what we've got there. getting there. Okay, I think we'll do that. Let's just see the state of this pipe. Okay, that's only got pollutant in, so let's turn these off. And although that's hot, it is cooling down because we did fit those radiators on there, so... Um, as I said earlier, temperature control on a hotter planet is actually quite a lot harder. Um, you have to start compressing and uh, expanding gases in order to, uh, to generate cooling. But on Mars we can just dump a lot of heat into the atmosphere because it's so cold outside. So you can see this is falling really, really fast now. Um, we've pressurised this to 500 kPa, so um, it should be uh, quite a lot of um, heat capacity to dump heat, um, but look how quickly that temperature is dropping with all those radiators in such a small volume. Um, so that should be down to the ambient temperature of, uh, well, externally at daytime, we're at 16 degrees very quickly, which is, of course, below the 21 that we have as a target. Um, but you can see internally, in fact, just as literally as we looked at it, that's just right on the balance point where it's flicking on and off, so it's got the temperature in there too pretty close to where we want it to be um, and that's okay um, I just need to know that this is going to be cool enough by the time we need to start cooling it down because the sun's going to heat that further okay so uh, with that in mind um, I'm conscious of power as well that's still not really coming as fast as we need it to be um, let's maybe add another solar panel and then let's go inside and see if we can plant something um, you can see how in station is it is a constant balance of what needs my attention next most urgently um, but you do reach a point where with enough automation you're not having to actually watch these things so we already know that once we get that gas on the top cooled down enough we won't need to worry about the temperature in the hab going outside of the sensible kind of greenhouse range um, we also know that if we've got smelting to do we can just literally go and bring the ore and throw it straight in and it will just get smelted um, you know so we are uh, we are making progress with automation and obviously the more you automate the more time that gives you to start to do more major projects in the game. Right, I will need to save some copper back for some heavy cable. Um, and actually, I hadn't realised, more importantly, we're going to need, I think, another iron. Yes, we're going to need another iron sheet so that I can actually build another 
um, unit on the top. Right. Let's put those in there. That won't be anywhere near enough, but... Oh, it's only built two of those. I thought it had done far more. Right. Well, better get on with it then. Okay, right. So now we are going to put another oops, frame up here. I mean, I could have probably done with a second one underneath it, but we'll worry about that later. Um, we'll do that. We'll turn that on. Right, now while I'm up here I'm going to remember to turn this one this time. Whoops, I sort of still turned it the wrong way, but hey. And we'll connect that, and we'll also need to connect the other side. Actually, let's just do that, because we know we're going to need more. Keeping an eye on my jetpack propellant. I'm okay for now. Oh, come on. too much now but never mind we'll use that for the next one we're going to need quite a lot more solar panels before we're done here um, however importantly a solar panel with no glass in it is not very helpful to anyone there we go good so that's generating some more power so I'm hoping we should start to see these batteries get a bit of charge in them now um, I'm slightly tempted to um, I hardly got any quiet cable. Um, slightly tempted to just build another one. I think I may do that um, while we're here. Um, see now why we left so much space here while this just about seems to be holding steady but it's certainly nowhere near enough um, so let's hope that adding another one is enough to get it to actually start to charge clearly we're going to need more so let's just do that that's now giving us about another 800 watts of charge once they are fully functioning and that's actually charging up now so uh, we may have a bit of a tricky tricky night ahead of us because it's quite late in the day but um, hopefully that will be enough 
Um, and we do have some coal there, so we can burn some of that. In fact, I'm going to burn some of that just to get some more power into the batteries, because it's going to be night any second. You can see even running the solid generator on full, it's uh, quite slow progress to actually charge this now. Um, quite a lot of power going down the line here to drive the atmosphere to set up. Um, and one thing we can do is obviously just turn that all off in one go there, um, which helps. Um, uh, we just need to be a bit careful when we do things like that, that we know what's connected to it, but that is just atmospherics. Um, it does turn off that pressure valve, um, which is a bit risky, but on the other hand, um, we also know that it stops anything going into the tank, so um, that should be fine. Um, now let's have a quick check on the state of things here. That's awfully hot, that gas in there. Um, that's not a good sign. That probably means the hab is awfully hot. Um, right, let's turn that off now. Okay, that's left us with a bit in there. Um, what I do need to do is to... Jetpack critical. There we go, that's better. Right, now we'd better go and check the state of the coolant over here. Okay, this coolant's now at 20 degrees, so that's good news. Um, and actually looking in through the roof, it's still flicking the heater on. Okay, well that's good. Okay. Um, and of course I turned off the gas mixer, so um, there's nothing more coming down the the line. Um, if this is cooled enough we'll turn it back on though because I want to start to build the pressure up. 45 degrees a bit hotter than I'd like. Um, it will give our cooler a workout. I'd rather turn it on, overheat it and find that I've messed up the wiring or something on the cooler now um, than actually start growing things. So let's turn that on and see what happens. Um, that mix is wrong, I uh, just realised that, so this instead of being 70-30 should be 30-70. Um, or the other way around. Um, I think, I think that was the problem, or maybe we just ran out of gas. That's input one and that's yeah, okay, that was wrong. So nitrogen input one should be 70%. Okay. Well, lucky I spotted that. Let's flick that back on for now. Um, see if we can build up a little bit more in there. It's going to be ever so hot. Okay, that's starting to change the ratios now. Moving in the right direction. Okay, I also think we ought to um, that hydrogen is very very hot we must not use the fuel mixer at the moment because if we do that is just going to auto ignite um, seventy six degrees in there eight seventy eight degrees in there um, that is going to make well. 75-ish degree now C fuel mix which is easily hot enough to auto ignite so um, we need to uh, be wary of that and later on again it's another piece of safety automation um, the ability to uh, automatically turn that mixer off when the temperature is in a dangerous range and we'll do the same here as well so that we don't pipe superheated gas into the hab um, but for now 33.8 degrees uh, it's not great but um, as I say it's going to give us an opportunity to just double check that this is working as designed um, I think we'll, we'll tackle it by starting on the outside so that whoa here comes a storm okay that was a terrible time to turn on a jetpack okay we're going inside we're going inside oh That was awful, just as I started to take off. Okay, let's get inside, it's all too much. Wow, 
Well, there we go. Right, let's rebuild that piece of cable while I remember. Otherwise, when we need it later, we won't have it. Okay. So, uh, temperature in here is isn't perfect at 21 degrees. So, um, that's pretty good, actually. Um, you'll see if I try and override it by turning these things on, it will turn them off. But if I, um, for example, so let's, let's uh, say I decided I wanted to make it 12 degrees. It's turning on the cooler, um, which may or may not actually cool it down because I think the uh, gas pipe temperature is, if I can even get it, okay. uh, nearly, there we go. I oh, know the temperature actually of that gas pipe, you can see it's warming up, but it's well below zero. So, um, and it has actually taken a degree of, temp of heat out of the uh, room temperature already. Uh, okay, let's set that back before we, uh, we forget to 21. Okay, so the good news is if we're now reasonably comfortable that this is going to stabilize at 21, it's a little bit annoying, um, just bouncing around like that. Um, then that means we can be fairly confident that actually if we plant something um, it's not going to die from the wrong temperature. So I'm going to replant some potatoes. Um, I know it's night time in the middle of a storm, um, but sometimes you've just got to do it. The potato would want me to. Um, so yes, we have unfavorable lighting at the moment. Um, right, well, not really sure what to do now while this storm rages outside. It's really quite wild. Um, I mean, we could put a plinth down and display something beautifully, I suppose. Um, let us display the great tracker beacon. No, maybe not. Uh, I mean, actually, to be fair, that's a lot tidier than it was, right? Um, what else have we got that's big? Not much. I guess we'll display our, our spare potato seeds then. There we go. Look at that. A thing of beauty. Right. Uh, some decayed food in there. Later on, we'll use decayed food. It's actually quite useful. Uh, you feed it into a composter. Compost is good for growing the uh, crops, but the other uh, brilliant advantage is it actually emits um, hydrogen. Um, so you can make a self-sustaining base using um, the hydrogen that's come off decomposed plants in order to feed into the gas generator. Um, it's not easy, it takes quite a lot of setting up, but um, it can be done. I've done it a couple of times. Um, and you just keep feeding it with uh, decomposed food and, uh, and vegetable matter and um, keep extracting the hydrogen. I feel like the storm doesn't look quite so bad when we can't see it. So, while the storm continues out there, um, I guess the next thing to start thinking about is some proper hydroponics in here. Um, I don't really want to connect straight up to this water because it's very cold and that was likely to kill things. Um, so we're going to need to set this up um, Power low. with some warming. There we go, that's the end of the storm. Um, I should have, uh, should have had a drink while I was in there, I've just noticed my hydration. Um, we'll need to set that up with some uh, ability to warm the water, temperature control it the same way that we are the atmosphere. Um, this is slightly less critical. Um, however, um, this might be a good time to uh, end this video. We obviously started with uh, a, a functional furnace, uh, which is now automated, uh, a functional greenhouse which is now automatically temperature controlled um, and we've expanded with the extra steel we've generated both the uh, gas processing to allow us to do carbon dioxide um, and also uh, 
um, we have added two additional solar panels um, in there as well. So uh, quite good progress uh, for this hour. Um, I'm going to turn these off um, so we don't forget about them. Um, I think the next thing to do will be probably to finish the um, uh, gas processor um, with the ability to just deal with um, pollutants because otherwise eventually this tank is going to over uh, exceed capacity. Um, I think we've got a little while to go yet um, but you can see it's 95% hot pollutant. Um, we'll probably just dump that into the atmosphere. It is quite a good refrigerant um, but so is carbon dioxide and uh, if it leaks it's, uh, it's less poisonous so I think we'll probably just dump the uh, pollutant for now. Um, but we should set that up um, so that will be another atmosphere processor and then we'll put some automation around it to control the power because you'll have noticed how often I'm turning it on and off. Um, it is quite power hungry um, when we're running the whole system um, and a lot of the time it's not really achieving anything. Um, so we got through the night, we've still got a little bit of power left in the batteries. Um, we need to obviously give it another day just to see whether having five panels plus a flat one is enough. Um, I guess I should probably Hydration remove that uh, panel as well uh, and replace it with a proper solar panel. However, uh, very quickly before we close this one up for this video, don't forget after a storm, sort out your solar panels. Um, so they're all going to need patching. I will patch that one. Actually, I'm not going to patch that one because I'm going to dismantle it in a minute. I'm going to fix these up though. Um, we really don't want these to stop working. So let's do that now. So we can use heavy panels, they're not damaged by storms. Or the other thing that we can do is actually put them inside a, a uh, glass um, building. Uh, so we could just build a series of windows over the top of this. Um, you lose a little bit of power if you do that because of the shadow um, from the window frames, but um, it's quite a good solution. Um, in terms of keeping them safe but for now they're all back to 100% health and they're all generating power nicely um, so we'll let them do their thing um, so let's oops, just try and land somewhere safely and then I think we'll uh, finish up this video there we go right so let's do that there we go and so thanks for watching and as I say next time uh, we've got more automation to come um, and we'll start to build out more uh, automated systems so that we can spend a bit more time then doing bigger projects like expanding the base without having to be constantly worrying about batteries running out or plants being killed. Um, and the next thing we'll probably do after that will be just to start thinking about some automated food production. Um, so hopefully you'll join me for that and uh, until next time. Bye for now.